everyone, this is Matt T. Show uh, and Intro Stats, and today we're continuing our discussion of the various ways of collecting data. So this is the part two video. In our last video, we looked at um, collecting data with a census, convenience sample, voluntary response sample, and simple random sample. And we're going to finish up just a few more uh, ways that people collect data. Um, so we're on uh, method five which is on the cluster sample. Okay, so the cluster sample uh, means you're collecting data from multiple groups of people in your population instead of one at a time. Uh, obviously, if you do a simple random sample and you're collecting individual data from individual people sort of, or objects one at a time, it can take a long time to collect data. It also can be very expensive. But as we mentioned before, a simple random sample is worth it. It's worth the time and money because you do get a pretty good uh, data set that's pretty representative usually. So um, the clustering is sort of a, a way of getting data from multiple groups. So you're kind of finding little pockets of groups of people in your population that you can collect data from. So instead of collecting data from one at a time, maybe I'm collecting data from 20 people at a time. Now, one of the keys that we saw last time was if you want to minimize bias, you need to have some kind of random technique. So, in other words, if you're going to collect data from groups of people in a cluster sample, you want to pick the groups randomly. So, for example, let's suppose that our population is all students at, col uh, at a college, at, at the college, and, and let's, uh, let's suppose instead of me picking student ID numbers and picking one student at a time, Maybe I can have the computer randomly select uh, the um, section number of the class, right? So, the, or if I had a column of data that had all the classes, I could just have a computer randomly select cells out of that column. So once that's the case, I could go to those classrooms and just get data, as long as their teachers wouldn't mind, and get data from all the students at the in, in those classes. So. Um, I, maybe, the, maybe the computer picked 20 classes at the college and I got data from you know, most of the students in almost every one of those 20 classes. So it would be a way for me to collect data uh, quicker um, and, it, and also usually saves money. Um, it also would be pretty good. It would still be a random sample. Every student at the college would have a chance of being chosen it just that their class was chosen. Now they wouldn't have an equal chance of being chosen, uh, but they still would have a chance. Uh, so it is pretty good. Um, I still think like simple random sample to me is still a little bit better, but uh, clustering is used sometimes. Now what if I didn't choose the groups randomly? What if instead of me picking uh, uh, classes randomly with a computer, how what if I just selected I don't know, the five or six classes that I teach, right? Well, it's still clustering. I'm still getting data from groups of students, but it wouldn't be very good, right? Um, I, I've now, not every student at the college has a chance of being chosen, and I've almost kind of taken clustering and convenience and kind of smashed them together, right? I've done something very convenient for me. It's very easy for me to get data from students that I actually teach and are in the physical class with. Okay, um, so that's clustering sample. Now one thing people do make a mistake is they think, um, remember it should be multiple groups. Uh, I always get someone that says, well I just went to one class and I got data from just the class that I'm in. Is that a cluster? And I would say, no, that sounds more like convenience data. You just went to the class that you sit in and got data from people that you were sitting next to. Right? Usually a clustering is multiple groups. So you have to go to multiple groups of people or objects um, and that would be considered a cluster sample. So remember, we do want the groups to be chosen randomly. That's the real key. Uh, number six is another method. It's sometimes called a stratified sample. So a stratified sample is a comparison study. I like to think of it as a comparison study. It's a very, very common, one of the most common uh, studies we do in statistics are stratified samples. We're always trying to compare, like uh, we're comparing people that took the medicine to people that took the placebo. 
Uh, we're trying to compare, um, you know, uh, people from uh, one state with another. So usually, um, what you do is usually what you do is uh, if you kind of compare two groups, two big groups or two, I kind of like to think of it as comparing multiple populations. Um, what I usually do is take a simple random sample from each group. So if I could take a simple random sample from each of my po those two populations and then compare the simple random samples. So it's almost like taking two or more simple random samples. Um, so let me give you an example. So suppose I want to compare the average salaries of, of working adults in California to the average salary of working adults in Arizona. Arizona and California are pretty close to each other. Uh, and I suppose I want to do a comparison study. Well, I could just take a simple random sample of people in California, and then a simple random sample of people in Arizona, and then I could compare them. By the way, they don't have to have the same sample size. A lot of people think you have to, you have to collect the same exact amount of data. You actually don't. As long as they're um, decently large random samples, you're, you're pretty okay. Um, so think of a stratified as a comparison study. Who, am I trying to compare one thing to another? Clustering usually is just one population you're dealing with, and you're just trying to get data from, uh, from just one sample from that population, but you're collecting data from groups of people in that one population instead of many, instead of uh, um, one at a time. Stratify, think of it as I'm comparing big groups or comparing populations. That's a good way to think of it. Now, if I don't choose, what if I just chose my friends, right? What if I chose my friends that live in California as my sample for California and my friends that live in Arizona and, uh, and, and that's my sample for Arizona? Well, first of all, it wouldn't be good, right? It would be very biased. It would have a lot of bias. It wouldn't reflect California and Arizona very well. So again, the main thing to keep in mind, random minimizes bias doesn't totally eliminate it. We'll kind of get into that in our next video. We'll be talking about bias and other ways you can mess up data sets. Uh, but not random, usually you're going to be, you're going to have usually a quite a bit of bias if you don't have a random sample. Okay? All right, let's look at the last one. So our last method is called systematic. This is where you use a system of some kind to select people or objects to collect data from. So you're you're collecting a sample, but you're, you're using some kind of system. It wasn't a random sample necessarily, it was some kind of system. So examples like you might see uh, people in a business might tell their employees, hey, every fifth person that comes into the store today, ask them this question, right? So you're basically every fifth person that comes in your store. By the way, that probably would not be very good. And almost that would be you know, borderline on convenience because it's so easy and it wouldn't reflect all of your customers, it's just the customers that came in the, on that day. And so that would probably have a lot of bias. A, actually a good, pretty good systematic would, it, if I had a list of my entire population, so like if I had, a, if I was looking at um, COC uh, college students at my college, and I, and I um, had a list of all their names, alphabetical list maybe, and then I just took every 50th person on the list. Right? And maybe I did number 50, and then number 100, and then 150, and 200, and so on. That would probably be pretty good. I mean, the list does have the entire population of the college on it. Now, the only issue with that is it, tr it really would not be a random sample, because if you think about it, numbers 1 through 49 on the list had no chance of being chosen. Only number 50, and number 100, and number 150, and so on. But sometimes you'll see people um, actually randomize the first choice before they do the system. So a very common thing that you'll see uh, data miners and others and uh, data scientists do sometimes is they'll, they'll, they'll have a computer randomly select a number between 1 and 50. So let's suppose they chose, uh, I don't know, 17, right? They chose, the, the computer chose 17. So they would go to the 17th person on the list and then they would go every 50 from there. So they would go fifth, uh, 17, 67, 117, 167, uh, one, one and so on. Right? So they, they basically have a random choice for the first choice only and then use their system after that. 
And that actually would be a random sample, because everybody on the population list would be chosen. In fact, it would be a simple random sample. Okay? So there's some good and bad systematics, um, uh, but that's another technique that is sometimes used when people collect data. Okay, so one of the takeaways from this, this discussion is the way you collect data matters. It matters a lot in terms of what you can say about populations. Okay, collecting data in a very biased way can have bad, uh, bad consequences. Okay, so that's why we're kind of going over some of the good and bad ways of collecting data. All right, so this is... Uh, ben, various ways to collect data. This was our video part two. And this is Matt Tuchot and Intro Stats. And I will see you next time.